Alright guys, good morning and welcome back to Seahawks Free Agent Stay or Go. And today, we're going to be looking at a pretty polarizing player on the Seahawks roster. And while he may be polarizing to the fan base, I don't think he's going to be that polarizing in terms of his price if he's brought back. I'm talking about Drew Locke here. So we're talking about Drew Locke and... First of all, before we talk about the uh, possible contract that he might need to stay in Seattle, we need to ask ourselves, what kind of role would he be playing if he was brought back by the Seahawks? So, the first, and as of right now, I think most likely scenario, is that he's brought back as a backup, either to Geno Smith or rookie first-round QBX. And in that case, he'd probably be brought in to compete for the starting job, but would be behind the eight ball because the rookie you have would presumably be somebody you really, really like. So there's that. And then there's the other scenario where you actually bring him back to start. And I think that's less likely, but I don't want to completely dismiss it. The free agency pool for quarterbacks this year is not good and Drew Locke is better than most of the options you could get. And of the options that you could get that are better than Drew Locke, and I say this as somebody who doesn't love Drew Locke or anything, I'm pretty whatever on him, but he's um, he's pretty clearly better than most of the guys that you could get, and the guys who you could get who are better than him are going to cost a ton of money. Like money that we do not have, money that we should not spend. So I guess it's possible. So if you bring him back as a backup, that's one thing. But if you bring him back and he knows he's likely or even possibly going to be the starter, he's probably going to want more money. But we're going to start from the assumption that he's going to be brought back as a backup. Again, either to Geno or rookie quarterback X. So I think that this is going to be fairly simple to deduce just based off his last contract. Last year... Drew Locke signed a one-year, $4 million deal with the Seattle Seahawks. Um, there were some, some incentives in there that could have pushed it up to, like, I think seven, which he obviously didn't hit. But um, that was the contract he got coming off a season where he did not play a single snap. Now, this most recent year, he actually played some. He played in four games, started two. So just because of that, if he comes back, even as a backup, he's going to want more than $4 million. So it might be significantly more than $4 million if he's going to be brought back as a potential starter. He might want like $10 million. But let's operate within the realm of him being a backup. So Drew Locke, he played okay last year when he came in for Geno Smith. He started two games, played four total, like I said. Um, the, the Giants game, he played... Okay, he basically made two good plays, but he was only in the game for a little bit there. He did fine. Uh, he was horrendous against the Rams. Uh, pretty much threw that game away. Um, he was decent against the Niners. He did wilt in the fourth quarter when the pass rush just started getting to him. But overall, I don't think he played too badly in that game. And the Eagles, that was a weird game. I, I think he played pretty well, but there was some very weird stuff going on in that game with how we used him and... I don't know if it says something bad about him or bad about our coordinator or bad about our coaches. I don't know. That game was weird for me. But Drew Locke played pretty decently. So he's definitely going to want more money than he got last year when he was coming off a season where he did not take a snap, did not throw a pass. So in order to get to the bottom of how much money Drew Locke might be able to earn as a backup, we're going to have to start scrolling through this quarterback list, and we are going to have to scroll way down here to start to get to the guys who are signed as backups. So we got to get all the way down to about number 27 on this list. Get down to number 27, you get past some of the big rookie contracts, <coughs> Excuse me, and you can start getting an idea of what a quality backup costs. Remember, Drew Locke, he has starting experience because he started a lot of games for the Broncos, so that's going to make him a little bit more of a valuable commodity. He's also coming into his prime. He's just turned 27, so theoretically his best year should be ahead of him. Now, 
Let's start with Jacoby Brissett here. He's the first guy I want to highlight. He was brought in by Washington as kind of a high-end emergency backup in case uh, things didn't work out with uh, their their intended player, their intended quarterback, Sam Howell. So Brissett was brought in kind of in the same way that Locke was brought in if the Seahawks decide to draft a quarterback this year. So one year, $8 million. If you look at what Brissett did to earn that money, he played quite well for Cleveland in 2022. Better than Locke has played in quite some time, and certainly more than what Locke did last year. And if you want to go back a little further than that to like Miami, he played okay there too. He's played okay in the past. So I, I don't think we're there yet. Jacoby Brissett was a good deal older than Drew Locke is now. That is a thing, but we're not there. So we're going to keep going, and the next quarterback I want to take a look at is Taylor Heineke, who signed a two-year, $14 million deal with the Falcons, um, $7 million per. This is a multi-year deal, which is interesting, but that's always on the table for a, even a backup quarterback. So Taylor Heineke, if you take a look at what he did to earn that money, he was a pretty decent quarterback for the uh, uh, commanders slash football team, what, whatever they were called at this time. So I'm, I'm pretty sure they were the football team and then the commanders, but he actually started most games across this two year period and he played decently. Um, nothing crazy, nothing over the top. And obviously it wasn't good enough for him to stick around in Washington and it probably shouldn't have been, but this was pretty good. This is probably better than anything Drew Locke has done the last couple years. So I don't think we're there quite yet. Uh, Heineke is another guy who was a little bit older than Locke is now, but I want to keep going. Um, next up is Mitchell Trubisky. Signed a two-year, $11.25 million deal with the Steelers uh, last offseason. Five and, call it five and a half. It's a little more than five and a half. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, coming off a season where he was also playing with the Steelers, so this was a re-sign. And he played... Eh, kind of, sort of, okay, passably, I guess. Um, not not, uh, not much to say, just kind of like chugged along for the five games he played. Uh, five games he started, rather, went two and three record. Uh, we're we're kind of getting there, aren't we, right? Like, this is kind of similar to what Drew Locke did for the Seahawks in 2023. Like, Mitch Trubisky in 2022 is actually probably a strong comp. Now, Trubisky had the benefit of being a former number two overall pick, uh, Drew Locke wasn't even a first-round pick. That probably helps a guy like Trubisky get paid. But it's also been a year since this. So I think we're kind of in the right territory here already. So I think the template for a Drew Locke contract should be around this Mitchell Trubisky money. Uh, you want to keep going. Tyrod Taylor is another guy who got signed after the 2021 season by the, uh, by the Giants to back up Daniel Jones for $5.5 million a year over two years. I mean, Tyrod Taylor in 2021, he played a little bit for Houston, had mediocre success, I guess, was not terrible, was not bad, was not good, just was kind of a guy who existed. And um, again, I think you can compare it pretty similarly to Drew Locke. So I think we're in the right territory here. Tyrod Taylor was a couple years older than Drew Locke is now as well. So I think we've kind of hit that area. This five and a half million dollars a year type situation. I don't know if it'll be one year or two years, but you're probably looking at something in that rough range. If you want to go a little bit further than that, you do have a guy like an Andy Dalton who was much older than Drew Locke is now by like eight years. But last year he signed the two year $10 million deal with Carolina to back up Bryce Young. Um, you can see that he actually had a nice year for the Saints the previous year. Actually, probably one of the better seasons we've looked at so far today. But at the same time, we also know that um, Dalton's much older and has only downside at this point because of his age. So that probably hurt his earning potential a little bit and it hurt the way he was perceived. Got a guy like a Jared Stidham who signed the two-year $10 million deal. Jared Stidham, kind of Drew Lockish, right? Uh, he started a couple of games for the uh, uh, Raiders in 2022, played kind of sort of okay, not anything special, but he was an NFL quarterback in the loosest definition of the word. So that's a very good comp, I think, as well to a Drew Locke. Maybe Locke's a little bit better because he was a second round pick and he's got a big arm. And um, 
the um, last guy I think you could take a look at here would be Sam Darnold. Now, Sam Darnold, even though he's only 25, has played enough to where I think we all know he's not good anymore. So him getting one year, four and a half million dollars, I think is more a product of him having had so many opportunities to play football. Everybody just knows he's bad. So I don't think we can use this as much of a template because Drew Locke is in this situation where it feels like people still think he might be good because in their mind, things haven't been settled yet. Like if, if uh, Drew, Sam Darnold was actually a good quarterback, we would have seen more signs by now, but we haven't. So people have already like, oh, that's a career backup at best. Drew Locke's not there yet. Drew Locke supposedly still has potential beyond that. So I don't think we're going to get the four and a half. I think you are looking at something like one year, five million, one year, five and a half million, maybe two years, 10, two years, 11. So either way, you're looking at about that average annual value. It depends on if Drew Locke is ready to just accept being a perma backup or if he wants to get another opportunity to find a starting job next off season. So if he is the starter, just to entertain that possibility real quick, then it's a little bit tougher. Then I think you're looking at something more along the lines of $10 million a year. One year, $10 million. Not as much as what Jordan Love got in a similar circumstance, but you're probably looking at more than what Geno Smith got a couple years ago when he got that one-year deal to start for the Seahawks. So assuming it's the backup situation where he's backing up Geno or backing up rookie QBX, am I doing one year $5.5 million? I don't, I don't think so. He is better than most backups out there, I feel like, and there is a little bit of upper-level potential that a lot of these backups don't have. Like, um, Sam Darnold is a good example. Sam Darnold's just never going to be anything more than what he is. Jacoby Brissett, at this point, is not any more than what he is. Um, I, I would say that somebody like um, uh, Andy Dalton is probably just going to get worse. He's not even as good as what he is right now. But Drew Locke, there is some possibility of there being untapped potential in there. There is some upper-level arm talent, which is always appealing. But <clears throat> I just need that money for other things. And I feel like I can get a quarterback in the draft who will be like one-tenth of that cost, who can be a semi-effective backup for Geno Smith or rookie QBX. Um, the, the thing that really does it for me is the way in which Drew Locke was utilized in that Eagles game. Like, that really confused me because we turned him into a handoff machine. We just told him to hand the ball off all game and then just throw short, easy, quick passes. And we didn't let him do much of anything until the two-minute uh, drop drill at the end. Like, they ran that game like they did not trust Drew Locke at all. And while that could be a poor reflection of the coaching staff, it also might be a reflection of the fact that they know Drew Locke is going to mess it up if they allow him to air it out, even against a terrible defense like the Eagles. I feel like I could get that for way less money. I could go get an Aiden O'Connell type. I could go get a, you know, find another Brock Purdy. Like, those are quarterbacks that you probably have to protect with your game plan too, but at least I'm not spending big money on them. So, unless this new coaching staff feels like they can really get something great out of them, and they see an opportunity to keep a guy who they like more than a lot of the guys in the draft. I'm not on board with it, but that's the way I see it. And if Geno goes and we decide to bring Drew Locke back as a potential or probable starter, and the price is like one year, $10 million, that might not be so bad. That I'm a little more on board for because I do want a veteran, even with a high-profile rookie, to potentially protect him and allow him to have time to get his feet underneath him. And I, I do think that there's value there. I'd rather have Drew Locke for $10 million than Ryan Tannehill for $15 million or something like that. That's for sure. But the backup scenario, not so into. As a potential starter, yeah. We, we, uh, one year $10 million, one year $11 million, even $12 million, Sure. Beats giving Kirk Cousins $40 million. I know that. All right. I'll see you guys later. Go Hawks. Let me know what you think about Drew Locke and his potential upcoming contract negotiations. See y'all later.